Hello, welcome to my creative cast, where we talk about films, TV shows, and video games, and everything in between. It's just a few things that I love, and a few things that I want to discuss. Today we have back on the show with us, Javi and Vince. Welcome guys. How's it going? What's up? Uh, today, today on my creative, uh, our topic of the show is Netflix, another cable service. But before we discuss that, we have a few items on the list. Quote of the day for you, the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. And, beer of the day, Vince, why don't you tell us what we're drinking. So we actually have a beer from Omnigang. Omnigang? Omnigang. Omnigang. Uh, it is, just because it's going to kind of set the tone, it's a Game of Thrones uh, specific beer. The label actually says a beer for Cersei, so for all you haters, you know, this is the one. But what it is, is a sour blonde uh, blend. and mm. Sour blonde blend. A sour blonde blend. Very but nice. Yes, yeah, it's a cool little design. Gold. Super cheap. So if you ever see it in your neighborhood, Total Wine, pick it up. Good stuff. Awesome. Nice, nice and light. Guys. Nice and light. Tastes pretty good. Yeah. It has a nice uh, crisp, kind of refreshing taste, which is nice because it's hot in here. <clears throat> okay. Some housekeeping. That wasn't a plug for Nelly, was it? No, it wasn't a plug. <laughs> take, off uh, all your, uh, <laughs> take off all your clothes now, guys. <laughs> don't, don't do that, guys. Don't, please. Uh, handles. We've all got them. Want to feature your handle? Like and subscribe, then comment your handle down below. Uh, we'll know if you've subscribed, and your comment We're will watching. stay if you do. We're all watching. As far as our handles, Facebook, www.facebook.com slash mind. Instagram at my creative mind, Twitch at my creative mind, Twitter at my creative, and we are also now on SoundCloud. Check us out in our other social medias, please and thank you. Still coming soon is Patreon. Welcome to the My Creative Crew, everyone, and thank you for liking and subscribing. You are listening and/or watching right now, then you are our friends. Patreon is coming, and being a part of our Patreon crew. <clears throat> will help us continue to create the content with additional incentives than those who are su just subscribed to YouTube. Patreon-only posts, videos, and fun additional content. We will have more information as that is rolled out. Thank you. Now let's get on with the show. Okay. We got a few articles on the, the show today. Uh, and I just wanted to start today's off uh, with some Kingdom Hearts 3 news. Uh, if you guys are big fans of Kingdom Hearts 3, or if you're big fans of the Funko Pop figurines, this is something for you guys. Over on comicbook.com, uh, they state, Funko will be taking advantage of Kingdom Hearts 3, as the company is preparing a special line of pop figurines based on the Monsters, Inc. versions of the characters. First up is Human Sora complete with his signature keyblade in hand. Next up is Sora's monstrous form, complete with sharp red hair and a werewolf-style getup. Monster Goofy is the next featured character, complete with his googly, multicolored, multicolored eyes and his green monster skin, as well as that signature vest. Finally, there's Monster Donald, featuring one solo eye in his head and a blue body and his signature Kingdom Hearts getup. All of these characters look pretty fantastic and no doubt will be fodder for the Kingdom Hearts collectors out there. So if you're interested in Kingdom Hearts and or Funko Pop, take a look at that. Comicbook.com. Kingdom Hearts 3 Funko Pop characters. Article 2 comes from GameSpot. Thank you, GameSpot. Uh, they released an article um, showing off a Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is coming out in September, um, in a statue for $800 built by the Weta Workshop. And if you guys are familiar, Weta Workshop is the, um, the workshop used uh, through, throughout the Lord of the Rings, right? They're, they're, they're actually studio, the, the artists and everything that do the Lord of the Rings stuff or did the Lord of the Rings stuff. Uh, so as Weta Workshop, the prop studio behind Lord of the Rings franchise, has revealed a new Lara Croft figure based on a tense scene from the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. The $800 American dollar statue is a 1-4 to four scale model made from polystone. 
It was designed by Weta's Daniel Falconer and first shown off at San Diego's Comic-Con back in July. The richly detailed model shows Laura, or Lara, with her fighting tools in her hand, or fighting tools like her knife, bow, pistol, and pickaxe. The tree the jaguar stands on is covered in moss, while the entire figure stands on a base that looks like stone. Only 750 of these are being made, and you can pre-order now through Weta's website. Pretty awesome figurine, if I do say so myself. I don't know, you guys saw it, right? It looked pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, I saw a little quick piece of it with like the jaguar and stuff. Yeah. yeah it looks pretty Eight, good. 800 though? What can you do with eight hundred dollars? What lot can you, can you do with eight hundred dollars? <laughs> There's a lot of things you can do to eight hundred dollars. Go to Vegas and have a good time for eight hundred dollars. I don't know. <laughs> Would you be willing to actually pay for that? Though? No, no. I mean, if I had a spare eight hundred dollars, but that's not <laughs> what ever, ever you're really, going to happen. You're really gonna have a spare eight hundred dollars? Eight hundred dollars? Yeah, eight hundred dollars. I'm gonna uh, like. This isn't Lord of the Rings. <laughs> This right. isn't Star Wars. It's not like one of those games, I mean, movies that have like the biggest cult followings. Yeah, but it's a pretty big franchise considering. I mean, it, it well, came out back in the 90s when she had, you know, fucking triangle boobs and stuff. I mean, on the original P PlayStation and she's still surviving on the PlayStation 4 today. So it's kind of a cool testament to, of time, uh, at least for those diehard PlayStation fans, yeah. you know, that really grew up on... Laura, and then now still are able to play as her, and even collect the statue figurine, you know. But I mean, there's only 750 made. I don't, I, I doubt that's gonna be like easy to easy to like grab. You know what I mean? Unless you really have the money. Uh huh. But whatever. Yeah. Still, it's eight hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a lot of money. All right, on to <laughs> Article Three. Right. This is also from ComicBook.com. Right. Book. Up, right. Um, and this is more Witcher news for you guys. Uh, I know last week we discussed a little bit about um, the Witcher Netflix series. So here's a little follow-up. As uh, we were talking about, they didn't have any kind of casting calls going on, or, or at least they were in discussion mm -hmm. um, publicly about it. Uh, but now there's a little bit of a leak. What is the leak? Seems to be the script. The whole script. Or part, part of, of the, the script, script has the script. leaked out. Um, so, progress continues to be made on the highly anticipated Netflix series, The Witcher, based on the novels that are inspired by CD Projekt Red's The Witcher, and the author of the books. Um, he's on board as uh, the creative and the show's writer, uh, Lauren S. Hisrich, continuing to share her contagious excitement with all loyal fans who have been excited to see the world of witchers and monsters brought to life as series. That is, until the script reportedly leaked. And that went downhill fast. The showrunner took to her Twitter once more to explain the leak and why it is not as big of a deal as many are making it out to be. Now, in the actual article, it goes and lists off some of the actual script where it's like Geralt and, um, what was her name, Tris, talking back and forth, and it seemed very modern, uh, uh, like a conversation when, if you remember, this is more of a fantasy-esque type of role. So the, the dialogue and, and everything is going to kind of fit that, that medium. Um, so she actually goes on Twitter saying, Remember when I said that casting sides would leak and not to worry because they're not real scenes or scenarios or even storylines from the show? She says, I knew it would happen as I knew it would. Don't worry. All is okay in the hashtag Witcher world. You know, things are going to leak, for sure. Yeah. You know, and it's so it's smart of her to actually create, like, a faux script and have that be the casting call mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, because in this day and age, you have Star Wars, you have all these big, major, like, franchises that people are trying to, like, even Game of Thrones, you know, where they have, like, you see those, like, photos coming out when they're, like, in Iceland or anything like that, and it's, like, these public people, like, walking... And they take a quick like snapshot mm -hmm. of like you oh, know yeah. everyone and they're do they're doing the filming and everything and it's just like oh what are they doing and then there's big theories that come out and yeah. it's nice for the hype um, and it's you know so but it's gonna happen it's totally gonna happen yeah yeah you know? yeah like the, the whole like uh, 
like the Marvel series where they're taking pictures of what's going on currently. Yeah. And they have like some little gadget around their hand where people are thinking that that's, that's what's helping them time travel in the movie. Oh, right. Spoiler alert. Um, you see, I learned from him. You say it, you <laughs> you say say it after. You say it after. You say it afterwards. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, there, there, there's always going to be somebody that's going to like find find something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I feel like a lot of the times it comes from people that already work there anyway. Yeah. Oh, let me just take a picture of this. Um, let me just take a picture real quickly. Um, and then just send it to my friends. And then that person screenshots it. And then that person sends it to somebody else. And that person uploads it. Yeah. And then everybody has it. It's the same. Yeah. And it's like the same cycle over and over again. I mean, you got to wonder who's going to be ballsy enough to actually, you know, sign away these confidentiality. <laughs> right? You know. But, but, I, mean, be like, but I feel like it happens yeah, all the time. Yeah. Because it, it happens does, all the time. It does. Because people leak music, like, all the time. Yeah. The music's always being leaking out. Mm-hmm. And... The script or or pictures of like the 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 outfits and the costumes and the and the sets and stuff that happens what almost every single movie that people actually want to watch yeah yeah I don't know. I don't know so to me it's, <laughs> right it's, it's gonna right. happen but but, but did you see that they said that it was like oh it's it's probably not even like the actual finished uh yeah, that's like, what she was like, saying. Yeah, that's, that's she she came out on Twitter saying that is not the actual script. Don't you worry, yeah. because people were like expressing the fans of, of yeah. the going to be show were expressing concerns like this writing is so modern. This writing is yeah. like you know it's not yeah. even you know how they even speak in the books or how they speak in um, on the video game. It just seems so like you know oh yes I catch monsters and fight them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it just seems so bland. And she's like, don't you worry, that is not the actual script. But I feel like even even if that wasn't the actual script, why wouldn't they have them practice a script or, or come in for their their auditions speaking in a certain in a certain style? Wouldn't that be like fitting for your part if you can do it if you can sell it? That's what they want. Because yeah. if, they're, if they're gonna put you in, in in a room and you gotta talk in front of people and act out a scene, and you sound like you're from fucking East LA <laughs> in the middle of fucking Poland. <laughs> like they don't they're not gauging your your um well maybe your, it's your, maybe your, it's about like you know the the skill of being able to take the the modern dialogue and then maybe making it their own and kind of having it okay I'm going to give it like a ruggedness or I'm going to give it you know whatever whatever it may be and then it, that's what they're kind of key pointing taking is like well okay well when this guy gets to the actual real script then he's going to shine. It's going to be a lot better from what I'm seeing now because he was able to make that modern-looking or sounding script so oh, much more. Oh, it's almost like a test. It's yeah. Like a test. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. So one, the actual script is safe because it's not the, none of the casting people are, tr- are, are actually reading it at all, right? Mm-hmm. And then two, it allows for you know, the auditioners like the to really show, to yeah, really really show their and, exact, like, yeah. skill okay. and everything. Okay, on to Article 4 before we get to our main topic. Uh, We got there pretty quick, but this is a pretty heavy, um, pretty heavy article, and I think we're going to have a pretty good discussion on it. Um, It's uh, taking a look, this is on movieweb.com, it's taking a look at Guardians 3, James Gunn, firing, and the stance that Kevin Feige... I'm going to say Feige. Feige. I think it's Feige. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've heard of Feige. The stance that Kevin Feige is now taking. So let me read a little excerpt, and then we can get to discussing. Cool. Nearly a month after Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3 director James Gunn was fired from the third installment in the franchise by Disney. The director's fans and co-workers are still not giving up on trying to convince Disney to hire him back. And recent reports claim that Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige was even fighting to keep Gunn on board. Unfortunately, according to a new report, Disney will be standing firm on their decision, and Kevin Feige is now agreeing with the studio's ultimate decision. Disappointingly, even if it's true that Feige was pushing to keep Gunn on board, the latest report claims that Feige has come to terms with Disney's decision and is no longer pushing. So he seemed to have this stance... um, and for the full, full article, go ahead and uh, take a look at movieweb.com. Um, it should probably be one of the first ones that pop up. Um, 
So it looks like he kind of had a stance of like on the side of James Gunn, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, you know, kind of a little bit vocal about it and everything. And and you know, it, it almost sounds to me like you know, he was put in a room with Disney execs, and they said, "You're either on board with us, or you're not here." Kind of thing. It's almost like an ultimatum that it seemed like they had given him because he switched stance so quickly. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So. I mean, do you, do you guys know what the tweets? Because I had to look up. Because I didn't know what exactly he well, said. So I looked up. A few of them were like about, like it was almost like um, like pedo- like someone would consider him like a pedophile for saying like dirty yeah. stuff. So one of them was like that, and then the other one was about like um, like homophobic, homophobic. Remarks. They but go. I think he was trying to be, at the time, he was trying to push towards, like, a comedic kind of career, mm-hmm. because it was so long ago that he was trying to push towards those things and working on some jokes and things like that. Cause, to be you know, kind of controversial. To, and, to be controversial yeah. and everything. And, um, you know, and he, but he had already apologized about it. Yeah. And, I, and we all know what's going on now, where he had said, hey, you know, I, I apologize for this, and I'm going to apologize again, and, and, and everything. And so it just seemed... To me, it just seemed unfair. Like, why? Why would it be? You know, you know, if I had done something that that concerned someone else and their feelings and the way they felt after I I said it or done it, mm. and I apologize for that, you know, where is the where is the line or where is the amount of time where it's like, okay, you are now officially forgiven. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. It, it, and it, it, it's give and take, but at the same time, it's like so many years have passed by, and he already apologized and deleted the tweets. But you know, those things stay on in the internet and everything. And so there's this one person who just caused the commotion of it, yeah. and you know, here he is getting let go. And it's like, yeah, that's, where's the line? Where's the? I mean, if if you can get into an accident. After drinking and driving, and they still let you have your your uh, your license after whatever it is, how many thousands of dollars that they charge you and driving right, school right, right. and all right. that you stuff. You go through the consequences, you, you, like I said. You, yeah, you 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 pay the price, and then you come back and you you get your license and you move mm-hmm. on with your life. But how how many years was it since the last time that they? Um, that this was actually brought up. Was it 2006, as you said? Something like I think, that? No, I think it was even... I mean, right. I, I don't know if it was exactly 2006, but I feel like it was, like, more than six years ago. Mm-hmm. You know more what I mean? Six, yeah. And that's when he apologized for those for those tweets. Yeah. You, know? you can, you're wrong me, and let me know down in the comment section below if that's true. Um, but yeah. our discussion pretty much is, wh- what is the time frame? Yeah. Why are we... Um, not even the the time frame. I don't even think that the time frame is like like you the, know. It's like important. it's like, the fact that you've already you've already gone through the consequences. Right. It's like double jeopardy. Yeah. You know, you you if you kill someone and they they let you off or whatever, or you or you take do the time mm-hmm. if you had killed someone, but you actually really didn't do it, and then you got let off. That same person was actually not. I don't know. The, the fucking movie was pretty interesting, but. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's double jeopardy. You have you have that chance where you can't be tried more than once for the same crime. for the same for the same exact crime. You know, yeah. if I if I killed Joe Blow and Joe Blow ends up being alive, but I had done the crime, I could technically go kill Joe Blow, and there shouldn't be any kind of consequences towards that. Not that that's going to happen. Don't worry, guys. Unless he's mm-hmm. on Blow, because if he's on Blow, then he could probably survive, right? We were talking about cocaine after. <laughs> Don't do drugs. I mean, you got to look at it from two different perspectives, too. I mean, just to pay, play a little devil's advocate, this is Disney. You yeah. Know, Disney has always been known as this family-friendly, geared towards children and the family. Well, and I mean, do you, I mean, from maybe 1960 and up, maybe. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> I mean, before uh, races, Mickey. <laughs> it's not to say that they're they're perfect or anything like that, but when you think of Disney, that's like, oh, that's my aim is the kids and family. Um, so when you get tweets like, I like when little boys touch me in my silly place, and James goes, it's it's hard to kind of move yourself away from that. Be like, this is yeah. hearing that that's a little hard to be like, 
I don't know if we can necessarily support that. I mean, but I read in, I read I think it was either a part of that article or uh, I read before that they knew this had happened and it wasn't until after the fact that there was outrage right. that they did something about it. That's something I don't agree with. Um, I mean, if they would have initially said like, no, you know, his comments and his remarks were hasty from the beginning, then I could understand and be like, okay, well, they're just trying to watch out for their brand. It's all about branding. So if they would have done that prior, but it wasn't until someone brought it up again and it became a big thing again that they had to, okay, well, it's becoming a big thing, no bad press, uh, we don't stand by this, so fired, done. But I don't understand how it even got to the point where it built up momentum again. Like, who was this person that brought it up that somehow had th- that many people following what he was saying, even though... It had already been brought up to their attention, and people already knew about it. He had already like apologized, apologized for it. And like everything. how how did this guy have so much momentum? Like what, what was the? Per- I feel like it wasn't someone just randomly. I feel like it was no. someone no, no. in the business that doesn't like him for whatever reason. But I mean, like, why would it be just some random person? Some random like it, it wasn't. No, it was it was a it was a conservative. Um, I don't know if it was a politician. Disclaimer, we don't, we're not like... Trying to be political in any way. Well, no. Not even that, like we're not even, we're not condemning that it, that it's okay for pedophilia. We're, or, or the, or, or his remarks that he no, said. No, 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 no. But, what, what, what we're, what we're talking about is the fact that he had already apologized, right? He had already kind of stated, mm-hmm. or made a statement on, you know, his apology he got hired on by Disney, even though Disney knew his, you know, his apology, his tweets, and everything like that. They let him go through two movies, and then this, you know, conservative dude, you know, finds yeah. the tweets or whatever, or finds them on the internet, and he makes a big rant about it. And then Disney goes, "Okay, well, if we're if we're now getting all, you know, hissy fit on on every on everything, then we're just going to pull him from everything." Yeah. yeah, you know, and and that that's where I'm saying is is where the line was crossed, you know. Yeah, especially because like Disney, for however long they've been around, have stood for what they believed, mm-hmm. even when it was really racist and wrong. Um, for them to like go out of their way to please whoever the hell the, these people were mm-hmm. for something. That's already been brought up. Like I feel like they had no backbone. Like they they just wanted them to shut up. Mm-hmm. And look, we're gonna continue making money regardless of whether he's here or not. Because uh, I honestly don't feel like that many people are gonna pay attention to it. Like there's gonna be a certain amount of people that pay attention to it and care about it, but there's not gonna be that much of a an impact to where they're not gonna go watch it. I don't. I don't. I don't well, see anybody that, that's, that's going to so, completely boycott the movie now. Like I highly doubt that there's going to be that many people that boycott it. That's the thing is they've the cast has actually signed like a an open. I believe it was an open letter or something. Well, yeah, team. that they don't want him. And then, that they want him back. Yeah, that they want him back. And Dave Bautista said, if they throw out that script, I'm done. I'm walking away. And you know he's he's a part of that. So they replace him. You know how does this change everything? I know he's not like Christopher Pratt and like the main character. Because if Christopher Pratt walked away, that's that's that would be a big blow. Yeah, you know, if Dave Bautista walked away, it's like, eh, you can. Well, actually, he, he, I know. think I personally think that he made a big impact in the last movie. I didn't even know he was in the movie. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> it's a joke because he's so he's so uh, still that no one can see. Him. Oh yeah. <laughs> like because of the, those whole scenes, like he had like a really good, like, uh, like a, a good part of the movie. Focused on him, and he was somehow like a really good comedic relief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even and his, his development even, too. Yeah, you it, know, because yeah. you learn a bit, a little bit more about his backstory and everything, and then you see him, you know, kind of. It, 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 it was kind of nice because in the in the first one, it seemed like he was more aggressive. You know what I mean? And yeah, kind of standoffish. But then you see him now in in volume two, and it was like. Oh, he's he's he feels like he's part of the family now. Yeah. Now he can joke around, and now he you know he yeah. feels for these for these these 
other characters in, in, in his ship, on his on his crew kind of thing. Yeah. I think it just goes to show how big of a platform social media has become, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. anything, you just have to be so careful with what you say in, in any scenario. So if you post something, it's like, anyone can bring that up and be like, yeah. Yeah, you know, but I feel he like... He said this on this date 10 years ago, and your image is shattered after that. Like, it, you don't... It's it's at least tainted after that fact, but I mean, I mean we can, we can say that it is and it isn't, but obviously it is for Disney to go out of their way and be like, no, we're done. Like, but I feel like it's like those companies that don't want backlash. They don't want they don't want to hear anything. They want everybody to be right. Happy and then so and- so my then question is, um, where or how far would it go? Right? Here's this dude who's already apologized. He said some horrible things that shouldn't have been said. He realized his faults. He said his apologies. And he deleted all the tweets. Someone else now, you know, comes in and says, no, 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 this is horrible, this is horrible, several, several years later. And now Disney turns around and goes, yep, you're fired. Sorry. So where's, where's, the next person that goes, oh, you know, so-and-so actor did this, this, and this, you know, 10 years ago. And then there's, like, more yeah. backlash there, mm-hmm. where it's like, so where, where's that line now that, that Disney has to turn around and draw? Because they're, they're so easily able to get rid of, you know, an, an important mm-hmm. creative artist, such as James Gunn, you know, and his, and his set of movies. It's like... Where where's that line that they, that Disney then is going to turn around and be like no no that's fine you know what I mean yeah. or if in that case there's going to be a lash from that it's like oh that's fine but this isn't fine right <laughs> like, yeah. but see and 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 the, adding to what you just said you said um, that where where are they going to draw the line and and are they going to just going to keep doing that to the people We're talking about James Gunn's position I'm I'm assuming the script is properly of, property of Disney. To the point where, even though James Gunn had a part in it, like it's still gonna but, be, it's still gonna be a part of his. And and they might not scrap it, or they might scrap it, but it's gonna be a, just a different version of that same script. To the point where James Gunn, it, he can't like either sue or get angry about it. If, but, it, if it has the same I concept, still get angry if about he it. has the same concept, they can't take it because it's his concept. Well, I mean, but if that, they, they, they would have, they would have to give him. Acknowledgement that James Gunn was a writer to this because he brought up the concept. I believe he can actually go in and be like, "No, I was the one who made this storyline or did this way, did this way," and he can actually go back and sue because they didn't give him credit. So they, if yeah, they utilize I mean, anything that he has, they have to give him credit, and I don't see them really doing that. So I really because then that. they still have to pay him. They yeah, still have I to mean, pay him. But I mean, it, this is part three. There's already so much built up be, from his previous stories that. Regardless of the what happens in the movie, there's still going to be backstory that he created in that movie. Right. Yeah. So. And I knew I knew this was going to be a, a discussion. I figured it, it's fun to kind of work your way up from the podcast and really get to the main beefy section of the main topic um, right after this. Welcome back, everyone. Well, it wasn't much of a break for you guys, but it was for us. Uh, we have a new beer. Javi, why don't you go ahead and uh, describe our new new beer for those Let's listeners see. at home. So we have the uh, So Happens It's Tuesday Woo. by The Brewery here in Orange County. Um, support it, local beer. Support local beer for sure. It's uh, Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels, a dark and delicious display of rich malt, toasty oak flavors, and vanilla-like notes from extended aging in bourbon barrels. Oh. Fourteen point seven percent is quite God delicious. Thank you, Javi. Thank cheers. you. So, cheers. cheers, 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 and everyone at home, cheers. Oh mm. wow, that is That's, good. Oh my yeah. god, <laughs> and it's like really, um, it's really light. Mm-hmm. It's it, it doesn't linger on the tongue. It doesn't leave that film. But it has that like kick when you when you like smell it. You know, it has that like kind of like sharp, yeah, right sharp. in the nose. It's like when, 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 when you take, like when you take that <laughs> shot of bourbon, they just like pop. right, right, yeah. yes. bourbon barrel aged. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about our topic. 
Our main topic. The topic of the topic of the topic of the podcast. <laughs> main topic being Netflix. Another cable streaming service. I made up the title. Pretty fun? You don't like it? No, it, I just, it just sounds <laughs> we just horrible. Read the, we read the article, <laughs> it, just, yeah. it just sounds horrible. That... Uh, so we have here, I kind of wrote down a little bit of notes. Cable, t- cable television versus faux cable uh, or false cable streaming service. So uh, based on the, the Netflix article by Ars Technica, uh, it says that the Netflix has provided an update or is doing a test update for particular um, profiles. Um, pretty much stating uh, that a major change to its video streaming service is in effect as of this week uh, for at least some of the users. Video ads for other Netflix series between episodes. That is the new update. The news emerges via user reports, particularly on the primary Netflix Reddit community. Gotta love Reddit. In which the users claim that ads for entirely different series would play between the episodes of a given show. Oh, shows binging. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not like a commercial where it's like breaking up the actual show. You yeah. know what I mean? Because that would be bullshit. Anyways, let me continue. Uh, I digress. Um, one initial claim said that an unskippable unskip- ad for the AMC series Better Call Saul appeared between episodes of Rick and Morty, and that this ad appeared while using Netflix's smart TV app. On an LG set in the UK. In a statement given to Ars Technica, Netflix described the change as follows. We are testing whether surfacing recommendations between episodes helps members discover stories they will enjoy faster. And I'm going to have another sip of this delicious beer. That just sounds... It just sounds scary. <clears throat> yeah, I don't want so, more ads. At first I was no. thinking that there were going to be ads... Like, in between the episode? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is? It yeah, is. it is. I think said it was going to be in the beginning. That's what I was worried about. But the article explains that they're actually like, let's say, How You Met Your Mother ends, there's an unskippable ad between episode one and episode two. That you oh! Cannot, that you yeah. cannot skip. Okay, okay, okay. It's still okay, like okay. a commercial, okay. but you just watched an episode, and now then. in between that, there's a little like commercial supporting their streaming services. You can't even fast forward like TiVo. You know, and see what you fa- can fast forward on the computer. Can't even do that. You can't skip at all. Unskippable. That's crazy. At least that's what they're testing, and I'm I'm just hoping that there's such a backlash and everything like that that there's, you know, it's going to be this, like, okay, we'll take it off. We won't do that. Yeah. Yeah. We heard you loud and clear, type of thing. I mean, what more like um, ad space do they want? The first thing that happens when you open up Netflix right? is yeah. a fucking <laughs> giant screen that says, "Oh, here, watch the fucking what's that? What's the name of that movie with uh, David Spade? Oh, the uh, something Father. Yeah, Father of the Year. Father of the Year. Father yeah. of the Year is in your fucking face as soon as you open up Netflix and an auto trailer and, and it plus starts, and it yeah. automatically starts playing. What that, more do they want? Like you're already you're already watching the fucking ad, like." Yeah, oh, I know. And new releases, all of their movies. Yeah, it's not even... I don't think it's ever going to actually pertain to anything else other than what they're showcasing. And they're trying to promote their content rather than anything else. Right, but it sounds different. Well, like, well, actually, to this article, I, I like because Better Call Saul is actually not... Right. It's an AMC, but, yeah. and at but least AMC so did, could be the ones paying. Like, no, I want you to it's promote just, this. It's just so, a way yeah, for exactly. Netflix to get more money. How, yeah. far, how far would Netflix go to, and, to where it's... It's cable ten years ago. Yeah. Right. Here is here is it's regular TV. When does it turn into regular TV? It's like this. This is the reason why, you know, cord cutters cut the cord on cable it was because of the the commercials and it's because of the the bullshit packages that they have. Yeah. So they cut it. They do Netflix. They do Hulu. They do whatever kind of streaming service they want to choose. And that allows them to choose as a premium member to not have any commercials to go straight through to their shows and watch them. Do you think you know? they'll they'll go into like an ultra premium to where it's like, oh, be able to skip ads and then I would be yeah, uh, I would be pissed. Yeah, they're definitely yeah, going to do that. Just... They're fucking definitely going that route, which would suck because they, they already increased their services. What a, like yeah. uh, six months ago, mm-hmm. they increased yeah. it by like two dollars or something of the mm-hmm. sort. 
I'm paying, so, I'm paying like thirteen ninety nine. Yeah, thirteen ninety nine. I don't even know. I don't know why I'm paying. I did not know that. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, they're eventually going to come out with like, oh, do it ad free, and I don't know. It's just, it's kind of. I personally think it's like, it's just greedy. They're just trying to make more money. Yeah, they, they're, they totally they're, are. Their CFO is has a fucking little like plan of you got to increase from the last year and then the, the year before that and you got to continue grow um, making more revenue each year. They're already making a shit ton of money. Like compared to Hulu, like Hulu makes money, but I don't think they make Netflix money. They yeah, they might be making know. some money, but I don't know. I, I can't feel, speak on the reports. I feel like a lot of people do have Hulu, though. I feel like a lot of people actually went away from Netflix and kind of started going to different aspects like Hulu and, and all that stuff. So I feel like Hulu's actually... Uh, well, bigger. because they raised their, their prices, I think. Who? Netflix? Netflix? Yeah. The first time around? Because originally, how much was Netflix a month? Like $7.99 or something like that. Yeah. And then it went up, and then it went up again. Mm-hmm. And then it went up. And, it went and I think that's when it went up the first time. I think that's when people really started using uh, Hulu. Mm-hmm. And now that they've increased it, and now they're talking about ads, it's just them trying to make even more money. But I think it's going to be kind of counterproductive because I feel like yeah, people are going to see gonna it be, and they're like, "I don't exactly. want to, I don't want to deal with this." Yeah. And then they're going to. I mean, and, and then similar to the last article, how far is too far? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. here, here's this this company now who is going o- overboard of, you know, trying to promote their streaming service, add unskippable, you know, ads, and um, <clears throat> try to promote their brand when they don't need to. Because I'm clicking on the Netflix app. Yeah. I know what I'm getting in myself into. I'm getting onto their app. I'm looking for their shows, you know, and the shows that they are licensing, mm-hmm. yeah. right, to, to be able to play. I'm paying good money. To scroll Netflix multiple times mm-hmm. and then just fall asleep, and then yeah. watch How I Met Your Mother, yeah. and then watch How I Met yeah. Your Mother or for Parks ten and minutes and being like, or The Office, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> the same three shows. There was, there was that. There was like a meme on on Reddit where it was like scrolls through Netflix for two hours, picks The Office, yeah. <laughs> watches it the seventh time. Oh no! See, I'm I'm just I'm I'm scared that. Once that happens, they're going to end up partnering up with somebody else. And then they're going to be fishing for more money other than other places once once maybe a fifth of their of their users stop using it so often or stop paying for it. My question is is do you think Netflix eventually will take a turn down and be like the next blockbuster? Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. They're they'll, the, they'll take a turn down the to where they made the it. wrong move, mm-hmm. and then if they're going to be pushing towards towards cable, right? Because you already have these adamant people who are mm-hmm. like, "No, I, I'm I'm out of here. I'm out of cable. I'm out of their reaches. I'm going to choose these streaming services." And then you turn around and have a streaming service who just kind of lowballs you with these fucking ads that you cannot mm-hmm. skip. They're commercials. That's all they are. Yeah, down down to the wire. They are just commercials. So how you know it's like. No, okay, I'm, I don't want that anymore. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, I think Hulu, for their basic subscription, has commercials, and you have to get their ultra premium. So maybe Netflix is just trying to mimic that or copy yeah. that business model. Yep. You know, to have... So they're going to have an ultra premium, mm-hmm. which is going to be like everything, and I can see it being 17 bucks a month. You know? Just no ads, ads, no yeah. nothing, right? And then you have... Up to four TVs or like how the, the normal thing is because I have like the deluxe ones. So I have up to four TVs mm-hmm. that can play at the same time, you know, and it just, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's just cable all over again. Now, essentially. Do, you, do you think that's going to, well, because do you think that's actually going to set the precedence for all these streaming services, especially the ones that are coming out, like Disney is coming out with one yeah, and you see Universe could. is coming out. That's going to set the precedence of... No, there's going to be ads that we're going to have so that way we can make all this money. So, I, I mean, we're going to fight against what? I mean, is it eventually just going to happen? And Turn into cable deal? again. And oh, then yeah, you're going to yeah. have one small company out of nowhere that's going to be like, 
we're licensing a bunch of things and there's no ads at all. Don't you worry, we'll never add ads. And everyone's going to flock to that and all their shares are going to go up. And, and so it's going to start that, like, it's like this whole, like, rebirth thing, you know? Cause yeah. Because cable's, cable's dying because Netflix, Hulu, and all those streaming services are coming up. What's that? They have a few different ones that are actually replacing cable that you pay for, like, $40. That actually gives you, like, basic TV. Like, I know PlayStation has something called PlayStation View. Mm. Where it's like really yeah, and it's a, it's a monthly th- stream through them, and you can watch live TV and watch normal yeah you know regular kind of cable kind of broadcast. That's kind of crazy. I forgot what it's called. There's a streaming service that actually does it to where it's you're just streaming online, and you're not you're moving away from that. But you're watching box. live TV though, right? You're watching live TV. Okay. Let live us know TV. in the comments yeah, down below. Live, Wait, but live be... TV, live TV. Sorry, no, live TV with like. Like ads, like the ads that they show on TV, because they would get in serious trouble for that. No, it's an, no, uh, no, 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 because no, no, it's an actual like service. It's not. Uh, I think they you actually have so, to pay for the service, and they'll probably paying out the people who are doing the ads. So when, when oh, let's say so, let's okay. say like uh, USA is playing whatever show they're playing, when it goes to commercial, there's just a, a small break. But oh, it doesn't go or, to... Or they'll play their own to, commercial. Yeah, it doesn't go to USA's commercials. They're going to play their own commercial or yeah. they're going to play, you know, something in between. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, well, that's how, like, the streaming, like, if you're watching TNT and you're watching the show and they go to the ad, they don't really display... Even if it's live, they don't display anyone else's commercial. They really display their own. Yeah. So, I mean, they'll, they'll be doing that, but... Crazy. I don't like it. No, I don't, I don't like it at all. Do you think that's going to... Question. So, do you think that's actually going to, you know, have people prevent themselves from binging so much? Like, oh, if you watch by it, far, yeah. I think it'll, so, it'll, it'll, it'll get to the point where people will just watch Vince, a couple that episodes. That's a good fucking question. Like, that's a good fucking question. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. no, 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 that's if you hit a commercial, it'll be like, oh, my mind's off of this now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally took that time. It's not five seconds in between to check my phone or whatever. It's literally a thirty second ad. To where I'm just like, man, I have to sit through this. Yeah. And, you know and like, like well, you guys all remember growing up watching TV and as soon as the commercial came on, okay, I'm going to go do this real quick. And yeah. you run yeah, and yeah. you go do Or you go use the restroom, you know what I yeah. mean? But, or, or you get distracted and you never, you don't come back and watch it and you're like, oh shit, hopefully it comes back on yeah, and right. I get to watch it right. in a rerun. But, and then you don't want to rewind it because as soon as it ends and you got to watch the video again. Damn. The that's true. I, yeah, wonder so if you, I wonder if you have if you to miss watch it, it <laughs> And then you have to run to the end of it. Then you have to watch the ad again. That it's sucks. gonna. It's uh, that you're you're oh, man right on the money. Fucking binge watching. It would it would, el- it would eliminate it because okay. Here's something like when I want to watch Daredevil and I want to binge watch that shit. Mm-hmm. I want to just okay. slam on the button and start the next episode. Of that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a second. And I love that they do the skip the skip yeah. intro right. And I'm like, okay, cool. Skip it. Skip it. Just move on because my mind is focused on you know. All of what Daredevil is. It's showing off like a certain, um, you know, idea and, and, and the ambiance mm. and like the darkness and everything. And you want to be a part of that. And if they turn around and between episodes start showing off Kimmy Schmidt, which is like bright and pink and like <laughs> yeah. colorful, you know what I mean? You're like, it just takes you out. It takes well, you out of that. And I'm, you're I'm, like, I'm, I don't want to. Unless don't even... they're going to be targeting specific, yeah. specific like shows and play something similar to that. Yeah. I think they'd be a little bit more strategic to where it's going to kind of. I mean, obviously, it trends to what you already like and what you're watching. So it's going to be something kind of more appealing to you. Like, hey, this is a show you probably have never heard of. This is a commercial about it, you know, during your time. But what well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, is is Better Call Saul very similar to Rick and Morty? No, <laughs> not, so not that, whatsoever. So Rude. that is that is what he was watching, and here is an episode or a little unskippable ad showing so now, Better Call Saul. No, it's that's it's really not necessarily what you're trending and what you're into it's who's paying me money to or, throw this in your face who's yeah. trying to make it trend. yeah who's yeah. trying who's trying to make it trend who's trying to you know basically push their content on them but that's not even it like if they're going to be showing their own their own damn like movie previews they're the, the only movies. ones that are going to be making money unless someone's really want to pay for those stupid well better call saw is an amc one so i mean they have the money to be like hey netflix you know, put our content out there. Yeah. And I'm sure if this is just a test, you know, and that's, probably, yeah. and that's probably why, that's why they're, that's why they're doing these certain ads. I mean, if, if according to the article, 
it's going to be Netflix streaming service. It's going to be their particular exclusive um, sitcoms or movies or whatever it may be, right? It said that? It says that, yeah. It says I, that I it's going if... to be Netflix focused um, to show off. It's where it says, we're testing whether surfacing recommendations between episodes helps members discover stories they will better enjoy. Which is funny because I feel like if they're continuing to promote their own shows and movies, does that just show that they've been losing that much money on what they've been doing lately to the point where they're trying to make that money back? Because I don't know if they necessarily make money on the ads. Well, not, no, or not the just, ads. If it's... But like on, on views, and, and views brings... Um, um, merchandise more and members, and, yeah, and more members and stuff like that. So, I'm wondering if they're trying to do this because the content that they're actually putting out isn't good. No, that's why. That's, that's what I'm they're losing money like on. They're, it. they're losing money on filming. Yeah, of, of, they're making all this content, and it's so vast and so big that I I, I ran through different things like, oh, that's a Netflix original. It's like it's like six fucking Adam Sandler movies. How many of them were actually fucking good? None of them. Probably not. I watched like two and they were terrible. One of them was kind of funny, which is the the one the, the, they're in the Wild West or whatever. What was that movie called? Ridiculous Six. Oh. Yes. That, one I don't was even kind, that one was kind of funny. But other than that, like I don't care to watch it again. And I don't care to watch any of the other ones. Or hashtag Iron Fist. Oh, yeah, or Iron <laughs> Fist. Like, Can you imagine how much money they lost having to pay like Marvel for to get like that like the copyright and all that, and for them to just throw it out and just be like garbage and lose all that money, like, yeah. like well, I mean, even the defenders, like nobody. Did you watch the defenders? Yeah, I did. You did. did. Was that okay? No, it was. It wasn't that great. I think I watched it one or two episodes. When's the episode where they're all in the elevator and then there's the? Fall? I think that's the like first second episode. episode. Oh, I thought it was second first episode? or second episode. Okay, second episode. It wasn't that good. It was kind of just. It was too many. Beside the point of, of, of that, that, because we can go on Defenders and, and continue to talk about that, but, I mean, I don't know, I think Netflix might be making the choice for the worst, so, I mean, it's good that they're actually testing it, instead of full-blown, no, we're rolling out with it, because they'll be able to see the trend of it, of how many times people just kind of log off, or That's probably why they're doing it in the UK versus doing it here first. Right. Oh yeah, because we're sensitive people. Well, no, it's yeah. doing. It's, it's, in, it's they're doing it in America. Sorry, UK people. Oh, are they? Are they are doing it in America. They're okay. doing it in America as well. I mean, the, one of the things I read was that, um, you know, an American viewer was actually stating that it was unskippable. They're the ones that said oh. this is unskippable for me. Yeah. Um, but there's actually a workaround, which you can. Um, sign on to your profile on the the web, not through the app, but on the web. And um, you go to your settings, and there's an area where it says "Do not test," and you can click that, and and that would it tells them, "Don't test on me. Don't um, don't allow the unskippable ads to to, mm-hmm. to happen okay. to me." Yeah, I'll I mean, fucking turn on Netflix right now. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> bring that shit up. Yeah. Yeah. So no. that there is a fix. So I mean, if, if you guys are outraged, you guys are upset. There's there's a, there's a way to work around, um, you know, the the issue. I think, you know, going onto your profile and saying "do not test" is almost a statement in itself, saying I don't like what you're doing, so mm-hmm. I do not test me on this update because I don't want to be a part of this unskippable ad shit yeah. kind of thing. Um, you know, and I'm sure there's surveys that that. They're trying to throw around too. Yeah. You know, if you could jump onto one of those and tell your mind on it, then that's that's doable as well. So, know? are we promoting this? Do not test. I'm. I totally. Yeah. Like if you. If oh, you are. If yeah. you're, I mean. I mean. If we if can. You're, actually, if you're against it, it's that's your. If it's real, go <laughs> and <laughs> find <laughs> out whether you can. <clears throat> yeah. Go onto your. Turn, you, turn it go off. Go your yeah, profile yeah. on your computer, right? You get to your profile. There's a little. There should be a section where it says "Do not test" or like a, a checkbox or yeah, you know, something where you're selecting it. Um, so I mean that that because we don't want Netflix to turn into an, another, you know, cable service. Yeah. Essentially, it's just turning into cable that's streaming. 
Yeah. You know? and, and I mean, like, how much longer? It's getting they... rid of the, the it's getting rid of the box and the satellite and the antenna. It's yeah, just and, doing away and with so that. We have to just... pay for really good internet to make sure that our download speeds are good because we're streaming this, and then we still have to watch ads. <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, like right, we're paying yeah. for the internet, we're paying for the actual premium service. And we still have to hit these commercials. And it's kind of like a whole wraparound it's cable. like, That's yeah, what it is. got you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you thought, but no. Imagine they're working with the damn cable companies. <laughs> they are the cable companies. Like, you know what? I got this good idea. It's a 10 year plan. We're going to call it Netflix. And then just roll <laughs> out with it. <laughs> We're going to start yeah. out just by DVDs and, you know, kill off Blockbuster and then we'll be good. That's what it is. <laughs> Uh, so uh, let us know in the comment section down below your thoughts on our main topic or any of the other articles that, that come about that kind of pique your interest. Uh, you know, we're seeing Netflix starting to turn into a cable streaming service. And, you know, what are your thoughts? Let us know down below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, get, let's start a discussion. Let's, uh, let's, get this, no. let's, get, <laughs> let's get this going. And, uh, you know, let's reach out and, uh, and, and be outspoken about it. And that way we can hopefully, uh, you know, be the voice to calm and stop this. Awesome. Uh, well, that was our show. Um, thank you for watching My Creative Cast. Uh, and My Creative. Javi. And Vincent. You guys have a good one. We'll see you next time. Cheers. 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 Do 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 do